So Paul, we've come back to Kerry here today to see the construction of a slurry tower that you've sold here to a farm. Um, I suppose just for our viewers, I think a lot of people know what they look like in the end. Um, I suppose why we've come back here today is maybe to see the construction, see the various components and to discuss say, the various aspects of how to, to build a slurry tower. So um, maybe for your customers, why are, why are people, maybe to start with, why are they buying a tower say, versus other solutions for slurry storage? I suppose the, I suppose every situation is different. Um, planning regulations in different counties is a dictating factor, certainly in some regions. Um, digging underground tanks can be an issue on some farms if they're hitting rock or whatever. So every situation is different and what suits one farm may not suit another. I suppose the advantages of the slurry tower is it's a, it's a relatively quick construction. Um, the working lifespan there, we've tanks that are up 40 years, so they have a good long lifespan, <coughs> and they're trouble free. And for their footprint, they have quite large capacity. Um, Cost-wise, well, that's far and against it, so, but we can go through the relative costs of different options at the end. Okay. So, yeah. you know, to here today, uh, the, so the steel panels are, are being fitted today, and started today. Yeah. Say, could you describe the construction process prior to that and what, what preparations needed to be done? Okay, so when the customer would place the order, I'd come out and we'd discuss preparing the, the groundworks on the site. So, which typically will be stripping off the topsoil, <coughs> putting in a four inch hard core, and then digging the, the, the ring beam. The ring beam is a foundation, it's about 600 mil wide and about 400 mil deep. And once that's prepared, we'll come on site then and pour that concrete and set the rag bolts. Right. And do you do the concrete part of it? We do the concrete. We pour the concrete. Why, why do you say take control of that side of it as well? Or just to well, it, I, I suppose, no, not, not to do with insurance, but I suppose, you know, it has to be very precise that where the rag bolts, that they're set properly. Okay. You know, so... Are we looking at one there? Then, yeah, so that's the rag bolts. <coughs> so once... So once that's set in the concrete, it's, it's set, it stays there. So we, we come out and do that. So and sometimes the, the foundations can be off when, when we come out and we may have to do a bit of correction before we pour the concrete. So, so how often are they uh, positioned, Paul? So there's one of these placed every four feet then in the foundation. Okay. Yeah. So that, then that's left set there for maybe a week or whatever before we come back to start fitting the, the panels. Right. Okay. So then you have, uh, you come on site then, say like you are today or whatever. You're, you have a galvanised frame obviously at the bottom then as well. Yes. And uh, what else are we looking at then? So you have a, say a right angle. Yeah, but the, the, these clips here just, the, the, these, these fix the, that's just a fixing then to fix the, the panels, the, or the galvanised strip to the foundation. And then once you the right angle piece, then galvanised piece starts taking your panels. Okay, right. And so what size panels then are these here? There's about 100 bolts, 110 bolts on each panel for to, to fix it. And they're also sealed with a mastic sealant. Okay. Obviously the sealant is key. Well, you know, for hoping this will, we we're expecting this to last 40 years. So we want it to stay waterproof for the 40 years. Is it galvanised or, or how, you know, what is the... No, it's gla glass fused, it's called. Okay. Uh, well, what maybe, is that? It'd be a bit technical for me, but I, I suppose it's glass that is actually fused onto, onto the metal. Okay, protecting it from rusting? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay. inside and outside. Okay. Now, the, because they, they are a metal sheet, the prices of, met, of metal has increased this year, so we're affected by metal prices as well. So on this example here, Paul, what size of tank is it? This is what we call a 50-15. It's 50 foot diameter and 15 foot high. Yeah. So, and it's 172,000 gallons. So from the time of construction to the time when it's ready, it's, uh, how many weeks or days is that typically? See, if you were under pressure, you can wait for the concrete to cure. Yeah. That's the limiting factor. Okay. So you're talking about putting in the foundation, give it a, few, a week, Come back, you can have this as a few days' work. So, you, you, I suppose at, at maximum you're talking maybe three weeks, at optimum, to, to get it in. Okay. 
which is quite fast. Yeah. Now the, the ordering process can be is, is considerably longer. Yeah. You know because everything this year has been quite slow with with ordering. Yes. So um, once we once we get the stuff delivered, you can have it ready to go in three weeks. Right. Yeah. So um, when the tank is in operation or whatever. Getting the slurry out here. What's the plan here on this farm here? In this tank, the way over on this side, we've got a slatted shed, so the slurry is going to be pumped. This slatted shed has about a month storage, right. so every month he's going to pump from this tank up into the into the oh, sperm right. store, yeah. and I don't know, maybe that that will keep him going until February. So when it's time to empty the tank, it'll flow back. This will open the sluice valves here, and it'll flow back into the slatted tank again, and he will suck from the slatted tank. Okay. So no need for a reception tank, purely because he's a tank here, is that right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. There is no point, there is no benefit, because even if you were to put a smaller reception tank here, a big reception tank like this is far superior. Okay. You know, you're better to have you know, a small reception, and there is there's no advantage in having a small reception tank there. Okay, right. So, agitation then? <coughs> What is the process with agitation here? So with this tank, because it's 50 foot wide, we, he'll be agitating with just the jetter. Okay. So he will put his slurry pump in here, yeah. pump the slurry across, in through the jetter on the top, okay. and the jetter will break the slurry. And as this fills up, it will allow to it's, flow it's, back into the tank and, and it'll circulate, circulate. Okay. yes. Right. Okay. Typically, how long would that be, any idea? But it, it always depends, like when any time you go to agitate slurry, it depends if it's from cows, if there's washings from the milking parlour, depends what's the nature of the slurry inside right. it. Yeah. Now, because he's going to be t spread or filling from there maybe once a month, every time he will spread or pump across, he will be agitating to a degree. Mm. So there will never be a, a big agitating need needed to be done yeah. because he will be keeping it right. kind of broken up the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so what are we looking at here then? So what's this? This is, this is the, the frame actually that will go on the side of it. Afterwards, okay. yeah, where you'll be standing, where you'll be agitating from this frame, right. and there'll be a ladder up to that. Okay. So, and again, just on the design of the tanks, there's never a need to cross support no. uh, laterally or anything like no, that. No, no. It's all support in itself. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, and like it's tried and tested, like like there, there's tanks 40 years old still standing. Yes. So, no. Okay. So another topic at the minute is um, covering tanks or not to cover tanks. What are the options with a tank like this? But the, we, you, you have two options basically. <coughs> you have a tension roof or you have a floating cover. Right. Describe the first one. T the tension roof will be fixed onto the top panels. There will be a, a centre pole, stand, a hardwood centre pole standing in the centre and it will be a sloped in the, of the, tank in the centre of the tank. Yeah. And it will be a sloped roof and it will be a tensioned roof. Okay and it's, it'll, water will run off it and go off on the outside. Okay. The floating cover then will actually, is a f floating cover that sits on top of the slurry. Yeah. And will rise with the slurry. Okay. And you'll have a puddle pump on it to, 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 to when water lands on it, that'll pump the water off the top of the, okay. the floating cover. Okay. So, of, say, as a percentage of the tanks are selling, how many are putting a cover on? Oh, in the south, there's no covers right. going on tanks. Just, again, so, so, something that they weren't used to doing, <coughs> having to do? Or? Well, there, 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 isn't, there isn't really much benefit from a farmer's point of view yeah. with a cover. Yeah. That, is the, that is the reality. Yeah. So until the legislation will force people to do it, I, would, I can't see any advantage in putting on a cover myself. Okay. Common enough in Northern Ireland. Common, yeah, but, yeah and, but there is a grant there which makes it feasible. Yeah. So, the, the 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 price of covers, it's just it's 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 they're expensive. So until the you know, but that is the reason why it's feasible in the north is because of the grants. Okay. Yeah. Agitation then in covers. It doesn't make it easier, certainly. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So it's uh, it it makes it more difficult. Okay. But it can it, it doesn't prevent agitating. Yeah. But it just makes it more difficult as well. Okay. Yeah, which is easier to agitate with? Is it the one with the the, the, the tension roof yeah. would would be easier? I would okay. think, yeah. Yeah, easier to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's the tension roof again. In fairness, is uh, probably would last the lifetime of the the perma store because it's you know it's sitting up. Okay. You know, so it's probably a more permanent job. Okay. 
So I suppose cost, I suppose, is, is, as an indication for people here, it's 170,000 odd gallons, is it? Yeah. Uh, roughly, what is the, the total spend here? The, the price to, to, we break down the price into two parts. The price to Linton and Robinson would be about 35,000 for that tank. Okay. So, rather than to explain what's included, it's probably easier for me to explain what's not included in that price then. So the groundworks would not be included in that price. So the customer will have to come and clear the site first yeah. and put down the hardcore. Yeah. And he, he, the customer will be responsible for the, the excavation cost of the digger or whatever on yeah. the site. Yeah. The, c the concrete is not included in that price. Okay. The purchasing of the concrete. Now we will actually pour the concrete, but the actual purchase of the concrete is not included. For a tank this size, the concrete would, it would take about 45 cubic metres of concrete. So give or take about four, four and a half thousand roughly for concrete. The, the, there's about 25 sheets of A393 mesh needed for this size of a tank. Okay. And again, they're about probably, they vary so much this year, but you're probably over 120 euros a sheet anyway. So what, that's about another, what, four is it? Four grand. So there's about 10,000, they're far, or, Side costs, and then the, the the price of the tank itself is about thirty five thousand. Yeah. So this tank roughly will be costing around forty five to fifty thousand. Okay. All in. Right. For one hundred and seventy odd thousand. Yeah. Okay. Sluice valves like this are about three thousand. Side agitator would be about three thousand. Okay. Um, Armour in this case is not buying the side agitator. No. It's going to use your method here. Yes. Up and over. Yes. Yeah. Side agitators can be added afterwards yeah. if the if a person if he's not happy with the level of agitating he's okay. getting. Right. So what range of sizes then have you sold? What's the smallest to the biggest? Well, just this week here alone, now we're putting in one is a 90, 90 foot diameter, and a smaller one with a small one got in thirty five foot diameter. Right. You're you're an agent of Linton and Robinson, who who install the perma store tanks. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, and I cover all the south of Ireland for Linton and Robinson. They're based in Strabane, County Tyrone. Okay. So I cover all the south of Ireland. Okay, yeah. So, uh, <coughs> person inquires today, what are the lead times or what must a farmer do typically? Or the, it's, it's, you're talking about roughly tr three months okay. of lead time. But um, I suppose we, we would, uh, we, we, there, there is different options, you know, and we would always try to see every individual case isn't the perma store, might not be the best solution in every case. So you'd have to, we'd, we'd try to look at and, and go through the different options that are available. Okay. Um, the, I suppose if we, we could put in a similar type, the Labarone, similar, similar capacity would be about 20,000. So, and it's, uh, you don't have to worry about emissions or Yeah, what is the Labrone then? The Labrone, sorry, the Labrone is the, the slurry bags. Okay, yeah. So for similar, you would have, you know, for a similar capacity, you would have 20,000. There you could, we also do lagoons. Okay. And for the same capacity in the lagoon would be about 15,000. Okay. That was, the farmer has to do all the civils and everything then. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is, uh, there is more civils, as you say, in the lagoons, very little in the, the, the slurry bags. Yes, yeah. Okay. So what is demand like in general at the moment? Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been very, it's very busy. And uh, at the moment there seems to be a lot of interest, particularly in the Labarone, the slurry bags. Right. Um, the, basically because they're priced per gallon, they're priced per litre stored, they're the most economical way to... Yeah. Um, there's very little site preparation involved. Okay. So, so it is something I think that we, we will see yeah. uh, a lot of interest and a lot of people will go for it. Yeah. So slurry is the buzzword really, isn't it? In storage and weeks and everything, it's only going to go to one way. <coughs> it is, yeah, and I suppose like what, something we have to be very mindful is that because the closed season for spreading slurry is getting wider and yeah. the open season is getting smaller, how to get all this slurry out with, you know, onto grass. Yeah. And I think myself that there's going to have to be more serious thought put into slurry separation. Okay. Because it's fine we've been told that slurry is worth 50 euros for a thousand gallons of it or whatever, but if cows won't eat the grass after it or if you're bringing it in, in this after side in silage, mm. you know, it's, you know, whereas 
if we have to spread a lot of slurry across the summer, yeah. separated slurry is easier to, to deal with. Okay. So I think myself that we, that, that that's, that we will see a growing interest in separation. Okay. Yeah. So you're not, you're not only involved with Linton Robinson, you're, you have other aspects of your business? Uh, yes, our website is calfpins.ie. We sell mostly calf rearing products, but we also manufacture our own harness for lifting injured cows. And we sell these harnesses all over the world and even send them as far as Australia. So, so no, that's it. Look, Paul, it was good to see this here today. Very good, yeah, you're welcome. Nice to see the various stages of it, so thanks for your time. Yeah. Okay. Okay.